Thank you, Mr. Schillingford. Let me uh, greet all of the citizens and residents of Dominica. Let me say good morning to all of us, and of course to those of us who are present here at this um, press briefing. Um, as, as you can see, that we, uh, all of us, uh, wanted to have been in church this morning, uh, but we had to forego this and, and pray among ourselves. Uh, but the good book says we're two or more gathered together in his name. Then, you know, everything is fine, so we're able to pray this morning. Um, and there were more than two of us present. Um, so we're grateful for that. But I'm sure that um, the entire country um, was seized with, with, with prayer and worship and asking God to, to spare us um, any of the effects uh, or the impact of this um, of storm, of this storm that's approaching our country and of course the rest of the, of the um, Caribbean islands. Um, I must say to you, the citizens and residents of Dominica, that I believe that we are better prepared today than we were yesterday. I, I think in the last several hours a lot of progress has been made. Uh, we have um, sought to strengthen the various shelters, um, you know, and and tied some loose ends which were existent in, in some parts. And I, and I want to thank the membership of NEPO, uh, all of you, uh, for your extraordinary efforts. Obviously, ODM is playing a, a very, very critical role in providing guidance and providing leadership uh, in the process because that's where the nerve center resides. Um, and, is, and with the rest of us, uh, I'm feed from that. And so we're very grateful for the for the for the exceptional uh, coordination from um, Mr. Pascal, who is a coordinator, and Mr. Cecil Schillingford, who is always a, who is a state advisor on um, disaster management. So we're very very grateful to all of you. I also want to especially recognize the the chairman of the shelter committee, who has an extraordinary task. But you know, I, I see the people. You know, if we have a positive attitude, and we are we have an intrinsic motivation to do things, and um, we have a passion to get things done, then eighty percent of our work is done, and it is left for us to work together uh, to achieve the twenty percent. Um, you know, so and of course we have the the um, the director of primary health care. You know who has been assisting us, obviously, representing the whole health team, island-wide, but, but clearly the Ministry of Health um, has been able to do, to, to respond and to put things in place um, to, to the satisfaction of, of all of us. And the WASCO has been exceptional, you know, from the manager down to every staff member, very, very responsive. Um, we've, we're very, very grateful for this. And um, as you can see, even up to today, we have we we are still getting water from our, our taps. Um, though the decision was to have shut it down last night, but um, they have extended it um, on the request of the minister, um, Dr. McIntyre. Uh, so we thank Duasco for responding to this, and obviously they will speak to that this morning and to see at what time they have to shut it down because it is really in our interest for them to shut it down uh, to avoid any turbidity or you know. Or more than of the of the water that is already that's already in the storage facilities, so um, when these actions are taken, it is in our best interest. And of course, I want to thank the police for um, for ensuring that everything is in place, and it is left for us now to execute um, that plan as far as the police is concerned. But at the end of the day, the security of the state can't be done by the police alone. The police has but a limited role. Um, in this, and if if each of us were to respect the rules and regulations and the laws of the country, then there would not even be a need for police, <laughs> you know. Um, and if make a commitment to respect it, to respect the police um, advice and, and and instruction, then everything would be would be in order. Um, again, I want to say to um, the the country as a whole. Even if we we have seen the downgrading of the hurricane to a tropical storm, and of course there is also a flood a flood warning will come into effect at midday today, um, we have to continue to take the situation very seriously. Okay, we have to take it seriously because it is still early hours yet. Things can deteriorate, 
or things can improve to our satisfy our, our 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 pleasure or our comfort. But we have to keep on planning, as if we're gonna be hit and hit bad. Um, it is better that we over plan than we uh, uh, under plan, and then something would come and affect us. So we have to 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 plan properly because the fact is because of our historical relationship with storms we never thought a tropical storm could have been so impactful in our country but as i've said to all citizens and i'll say this morning with the advent of climate change and the impact and the effects of climate change um, you cannot trust the weather systems anymore um, so no longer can we trust um, excessive rain in dominica uh, before it would rain heavily for weeks in Dominica and all the water would flow peacefully into the ocean. And all that would happen is that the ocean would get brown. Now this is different. We have flood warnings for Dominica, many parts of Dominica. So we have to be mindful that um, with the phenomenon of climate change, things have changed. And therefore we have to respect the um, climatic conditions, the weather systems more now than we did 15, 20, 25 years ago. Um, I know all of us, with no exception in Dominica, are still um, suffering from anxieties, from emotional stress, from psychological stress, from fear, um, based on our experiences, first with um, Erica and secondly with um, Maria. And this is um, based on how the, the, our bodies and our minds are, are, are constructed, that's normal expectation. What we have to do is to, is to be able to manage it properly. Um, I, I want us to, be, to, to remain calm, um, to ensure that we do not overreact and, and cause our anxiety levels to get to the point where it's, it's affecting our health and our ability to function, our ability to think properly, and ability to understand our environment. Those of us who um, who suffer from um, chronic diseases like hypertension and so on, it's important that you take your medication. Um, diabetes and others, that you take your medication, um, that you secure your medication. Uh, if you go into a shelter, that you travel with your medication, the first thing you should put in your little bag a local plastic bag is your medication and, and ensure that you have the prescription at hand and your medication is taken because um, that can minimize any difficulties we have in, in the country. I want to, so I want us to be calm and so on, keep on praying. Um, we, with prayer, all things are possible. We have to keep on praying and, and I think with prayer, and not only pray by ourselves, but pray in groups that, that, that helps you know, um, manage our anxieties in, in some in some in some some state and so forth. I want to say that I am comforted um, by the commitment demonstrated by the various committees across the country. You know, I had the opportunity yesterday to interact with eleven different um, committees at the grassroots level, and one this morning. And I, I must say the, the commitment, the zeal, the desire to help, the desire to work, the desire to do, take all actions at the grassroots level to prepare the communities uh, for the disaster. I, I left those meetings with a, with a very peaceful mind, um, knowing that we have several people who are volunteering their time. It's not a paid job. These are people who are volunteering their time, many of whom um, are not employed by the state, but who are part of the community and they figure they have a role to play and they prepare to play the role. So I really want to, to thank um, thank you uh, for that on behalf of, of all of us. Because as I've said, we can do all of the planning we want at the NIPO level and we can ensure that we have all the bases covered as far as NIPO is concerned. But if at the local level, um, this is not filtered down and, and um, there is not the robustness of the planning at the local level and the commitment that we'll have a problem. And I think that they, we, are, we have been, been able to build greater synergies between NIPO and the local level and we have 
identify some gaps that we have been able to to fill in the interim but a lot we have long-term solutions medium-term and long-term solutions uh, to this so for example one of the issues that we have addressed is the issue of some minimal um, access to some basic access to funds um, at the community level so those communities will be empowered with some resources that they can uh, acquire things that they will need to put in place um, resources uh, services or goods they will need to acquire to, to ensure that their response mechanism their planning mechanisms are, are, are better um, fulfilled so that has been done and of course the ODM will be in touch with those committees as to how they go about accessing those resources um, but those funds have been approved and the mechanism will be determined by the management of the ODM um, again uh, the curfew um, and the state of emergency will come into effect at 4 p.m. today um, and it will be island-wide. I know that there was a publication which showed that it was for a particular locality in the country but this is going to be island-wide um, and we have to as a country do those things to better protect ourselves as, a, as citizens you know and not only from issues of lawlessness but even issues of executing our mandate um, in so far as the national emergency plan organization is concerned because there are times we the, those who are charged with the responsibility of providing services to us in times of emergency are unable to get to you because there are just so many people who are just sightseeing on the streets and on the roads and you go to these communities and the people the essential services cannot get through because and you know Dominica every Dominican house has two vehicles so you know we have lots of vehicles in Dominica now and everybody's driving and so on and so that creates a problem so not only from a security standpoint but also from the delivery of services and if you recognize is a growing trend in the world that um, that kind of proactive, preemptive actions are taken. Those kind of preemptive and proactive actions are taken to better able the the, the, the providers, the service providers, the essential services, to to meet, especially those, or to reach, especially those who are um, vulnerable um, if something were to happen. And we've seen it. I, I recall some time ago in um, Good Hope in San Sobe when we had this slide and some homes um, were, were washed away. We had great difficulty in getting to this um, to the site because everybody naturally, and it's not a criticism, it's a natural um, behavior of human beings to move and to see and to get as close as possible to the to the scene, um, not being mindful of the impact it has on assisting these people, and um, we had to get in, get the, uh, the SSU all the way from town to come in there to to take charge of this of the of the location so so we have to be mindful of those things that they you know um, all of those things so and I want to say to the, to the people of Dominica that for me personally uh, as, as a human being as a, as a person from a philosophical uh, ideological standpoint um, I I am not in favor of controlling the mobility of people people have a right to move and to move freely um, you know, and it's a fundamental right um, in international law. But these things are being done in this extraordinary circumstance to ensure that we are better able to, one, secure the state, but also equally uh, fundamentally to ensure that we can provide better services and better response, um, responses in the event that we're called out uh, to pro to reach to reach people who are in di in distress, so I want us to appreciate it and to look um, beyond our nose uh, in terms of how we view this decision of the state in respect to this terrible emergency and the curfew. But I I will say to you, um, once we um, see this storm through, and ODM advises the police and the police things that we can um, re um, lift the curfew. It will be done immediately. Um, so we are sending it all the way to 4 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, but that can be lifted at 6 o'clock uh, tomorrow or 8 o'clock tomorrow 
based on how things go because our hope and our prayer is that um, we will get a little rain it will dampen the soil and nothing will happen that's that's what we're praying for now a little rain not much um, and no wind <laughs> you know a little breeze that's all what we're hoping for um, but we do not know because as we've reminded ourselves Maria moved from a category 3 to category 5 in 36 minutes it, it, it almost literally skipped a category 4 um, you know um, so we have to be to be mindful of this uh, because many of us felt always oh, a category 3 we can stay there oh, we are right man we, we can stay there and so forth we don't have to move from the low lying areas or prone to flooding you know if I see the river coming up I will take my little bag and I will run away and so on and so on um, so we, we, we have the time so let us move so the um, ODM has identified for us the low lying areas the areas that are prone to, to flooding the areas that have been flooded during the trough system during the um, tropical storm and of course during the hurricane that you have to move and move now um, go to your relatives where the home is safe go to the shelter the shelters will open from 6 a.m. this morning um, to move don't wait when you see the river uh, overflowing it, it, it banks for you to try to, to to run because you may not have anywhere to run to so, so let, let us be mindful of that we it is always better for us to be saved than sorry in the old little saying locally better to be saved than sorry so I, I, will, I will end um, by say by repeating that from where I stand and, and my assessment of things and I and as you know I don't give people marks easily you know um, I am satisfied that the national emergency planning organization um, where we stand things are better place today than they were yesterday uh, because we have spent the whole of yesterday and the whole of last night and early this morning assessing things and ensuring that we respond uh, with determination uh, with clarity um, and with a sense of urgency um, to respond to the requests of the various publics out there so I want us to keep on praying let us be safe it's important for us to be our neighbor's keeper it's important for us to be our neighbor's keeper and um, for us to reach out for us. We, we need to know in the communities where every single person resides, especially the vulnerable. We need to account for all of the senior citizens. We need to account for all of the um, uh, sick and shortings. We need to account for all of the um, people with disabilities uh, of, of, of different kinds and be able to take them to safe to safety um, now and um, and ensure that we provide for them um, to the fullest extent we have to ensure that we that they they have the medication check us for ask them for their medical book because oh, you know our senior citizens they like to keep the medical book so let's look at it see whether they have any medication and ensure that when we're taking them along taking them to um, safer homes uh, or the shelters that they carry along we carry along with them the medication and so forth. So at this stage, all we can do now is to tighten up the loose screws, um, tighten up the loose screws and um, and ensure that um, we can, we do what we have to do. I also want to thank the Minister uh, for Disaster Management um, um, for his leadership in the process. And, um, and you know, yesterday, you know, I, I um, took him on a marathon yesterday. Um, so I, I, I had to make sure that he had some cocoa tea this morning yeah. uh, to to keep him. You see, you understand? Um, because it's, it's not easy to follow me. <laughs> you know, you know? Um, and I had to make sure that I had some some energy stuff in the vehicle to to feed him. As we go along the, the several miles across Dominica, uh, himself and um, and Dr. McIntyre, I want to thank them. But 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 I want to thank all of you, all the volunteers in Nepo. You know, there's uh, I I'm, I really I'm I'm happy and pleased about the attitude. You know, the attitude. Attitude is important. Our whole dispensation to things is important. You know, we have to work together. 
especially in these circumstances, or more so in, this, in the circumstances, because at the end of the day, this is our country. And every one of us was impacted by Hurricane Maria. Every one of us. There is no Dominican who was not impacted. But, and I will leave this matter for after this storm. But I will say to the church community that I am extremely disappointed that they will not make some of their church buildings available to their congregation to see this storm through. That when I go to communities, they're saying to me, and of course from the disaster committee, that churches are saying that we, we not, you can no longer use these churches as hurricane shelters. We have to be reminded of the Beatitudes. We have to be reminded of the lesson of the Messiah uh, to his disciples about when I was in prison, did you visit me? When I was homeless, did you provide me with shelter? I mean, when Mary and Jesus were on the donkey looking for a place to, to have the birth of the Messiah, we mustn't forget that he, that he, was, um, he went into the inn and they had space and they didn't allow him to, to, to have a little room in the inn so the Messiah could, 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 could be born, could, 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 could arrive on the earth in a decent place. He had to, they had to go into a manger among hay and animals for the Messiah to be born. And the Messiah became the, the, the you know, you know uh, um, the, he became our, our savior. We have now to go to him. We now have to answer to him, a man who was born in a manger. We now have to answer to him as to whether we go to heaven or we go to hell. And some of the things he's going to ask us are the very same questions he asked his, his disciples. But he wasn't asking only his disciples, he was asking us, really, um, on what have we done for the list of the brothers. And people now say the sisters. So I want us as religious leaders, you know, to reflect upon this thing. Not only religious leaders, but all of us. Do we, if we have a home that is safe in our community, for concrete roof, upstairs and downstairs, and most of us have homes that we only utilize one room in it. We go in the kitchen and so on, we cook and so on, we use the washroom and our bedroom. Many of us have not gone to many bedrooms in our homes. Many of us have not sat on our, on our, on our settees for years. Uh, some of our settees are covered with embroidery and all these things and so forth and, 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 and so on. We don't touch it. This thing is spotless as when they bought it in the plastic. Some of them still in the plastic. So we don't, we don't use our home. So how, how are we going to sleep tonight in this rain? Knowing that there are people who are next door neighbors who are not as lucky as us to have a home like this that we have. And we, we, we're going to stay in our, in our house by ourselves? What if something happens to you? These very same neighbors are going to have to reach out to you. So we have to think of our, our life as mere mortals. That, that which we have on earth, we're not going to go to heaven if it. And certainly, the way we behave, in, we may not see. We certainly will not see heaven if we deny in all the list of our brothers these basic um, things. I don't want to preach to you this morning, but and I don't want to lecture anybody. This is not my my intention, but it disturbs my mind. You know, as a Christian nation, that we would have people who would deny the state an opportunity to use these facilities um, for our brothers and sisters who are, who are the most vulnerable. Who are the most vulnerable? We cannot get more biblical than that. We cannot get far away from the teachings of the Messiah if we do not allow the least of our brothers to have access to our, our homes. I, 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 we have to watch this attitude in our country. Otherwise, all what we do in the physical, the building roads and building all these homes for people and so on, will come to naught if the human being, the, the whole uh, spirit of man, are not in sync with, 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 with um, these things. I, I'm, I'm saddened by that, I can tell you. And I have the opportunity to raise this with um, some of the church leaders who have denied us um, opportunities to use 
um, there are church buildings for for this thing. And I know, and I know, yes, in the past they have had difficulties because some of our citizens are not respectful of um, people's properties. But that's besides the point. You know, that's besides the point. You know, we in the world you deal with also behaviors and attitudes, and even the church. I mean, it's the, the, the society is the church. <laughs> you sort of say, we're not your garments. You, you know, this is what really meant when really not we're not your garments. You know, so, um, you know, uh, we cannot let past experiences interfere with us doing good. You know, you have, we, have, we must always keep on doing good, even if we are criticized for doing it, even if we, we lose by doing it. We must never stop doing good, and it, we can't have a building closed and people are are, are sheltering the hurricane or the storm or whatever we will be faced with in the next few hours, if if exposed to the elements. It's not nice. It's not. It's not. It's not nice. And so, um, but I I am I am I am sure, having said that, and 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 folks now, going back to the Bible and to see. Whether they have mis or misunderstood what the what the rules are, that will get some calls, um, and, and the, the the chairman of the committee will give his phone number um, that people can call him. So I'm sure we'll get calls to say, uh, look, I, I think there was a misunderstanding. You know, I said you can have the whole building, not only part of it, the whole building. So you, I don't know where the premise I get this thing from that we said that we don't want the building and so forth. No, we didn't say that. We said us don't use the office, but you can use the rest of the building. I I, re I'm, I I believe, I want to believe, I want to give these people the benefit of the doubt. And I want to believe that the chairman of the community, of the committee, did not hear properly. And I think, I think they were saying to them, no, no, Master, we can't use the whole building, my brother. I mean, we have an office there, we have documents in there, we have a filing cabinet in there. So we'll, we'll lock that, that place. Um, but the rest of the thing, I mean, after all, I mean, you can, I mean, brother, we can even give it to you. We can even transfer the title in the name of the state. Uh, so that, that's, that's all true. So my home is available. Um, my church is available, my brother. Um, what else do you need? Do you need um, mattresses? Do you need blankets? We have some stuff there from uh, an American NGO that we have extras um, that we can give you. We have some rations there from Maria that we still have dry goods that are still good. The expiration date is 2019, 2020. That we can give you guys. No, 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 we didn't say that. You know, we didn't say that at all. Um, so I, 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 I want to believe that, that um, I'm, I'm being badly informed, uh, you know, um, because they did not hear properly. And I, I'm sure that um, they'll get some calls there um, in the next hour. Uh, to say, no man, you can open anything. Just check so and so in the village for the key. She has a key, and she'll give it to you. I'll call her right away. I call her. I say, how oh, could you say that? This is not this is not the church. This is the church contrary to the biblical teachings. Uh, well, that's why I've been preaching all, all, all every Sunday. The beatitudes we have to reach out to the least among us. And how could we have a church there? You know, I mean, you forgot about the the, the hundred sheep and the only the shepherd went and he only met nine, 99 and he went into the storm to look for the one. Thank you very much. Those of you who will go to church, at least you have been now exposed to some, some teaching. That's all right. But you know, in these things, this you you manage anxiety to and your stress by being jovial, by smiling and and, and entertaining each other and, and speaking in this in this form. We can't always be tense, and so we have to relax the nerves. Because if the nerves are not relaxed, then we can't function. We okay. But thank you all. God bless us. Let us let us let us um. Keep on praying. Um, let us wish and hope and pray for the for the for the for the better. That it will get a little rain. There's a little rain. God, we're asking you for and a little wind and so forth. Um, and then tomorrow morning we'll all be in in one piece as a country and as citizens. Um, but we are not going to stop the planning. At Nipo, we have taken a firm decision that we're going full throttle, as if we're going to be hit by a Category Five hurricane. And, and that's how we plan. We're planning for the optimum, optimal, uh, for the worst. If something, nothing happens, thank God. If we are spared, thank God. But if unfortunately that the Lord decided to test us, as I said yesterday, like Job, then we'll be prepared um, and we'll stand in faith 
and will not curse blood and die. Thank you very much. God bless you. Now.